to the North Pole. And so we said, we'll put that in there. Big mistake, because it tanked at the box office, and that was sort of what uh, killed Discovery Bay. But if you get a first year park map, or right at the beginning that Sam McKim illustrated, you'll see two lands on it. One is Edison Square, and the other is Liberty Street. Ah, the Disneyland that never was. You know, it is, no matter what we do with our attractions and shows and our parades and all the marketing that we do, all of that is, is really uh, is, is important. However, it's our cast members that, um, that you hit on the front line of, of the park. And so my first job at Disneyland, I was a sweeper in Tomorrowland the summer of 1977, the summer that Space Mountain opened. <laughs> I loved being a sweeper. Everybody thinks, oh, it's just picking up trash. No, you know what's great about being a sweeper is you are out in amongst the crowds. You could hear people talking and the excitement. Everybody's happy there. You would get asked questions all the time because, you know, someone would need an, an, to ask a question. You were always the closest Disneyland employee, you know. They're not employees. They are cast members. That word was created for a very strong reason. A cast member is a part of a show. Uh, every day when that uh, main entrance opens, you put on the show, you're drawing back the curtain, you're on stage. When you come out of the door, you're always smiling. And I say, well, it's my print mark. Because, you know, I, you say, you give us a good service. And uh, I say, what I'm here for, you know, to, to help you for anything you need. It's very important for you to believe that there aren't people in uniforms out here working, that there are people that literally have roles in the story that is Disneyland and they live the experience. So I was working over here at Adventure Through Inner Space and there was a woman who was looking very perplexed and worried and had been standing there like for 15 minutes and I said can I help you and we had a microscope in there where we shrunk guests down to the size of an atom and you could see these little tiny people going by and she said I don't know. She said, my son went in about 15 minutes ago and he was supposed to wave when he got to the small part. And I haven't seen anybody waving yet. And uh, so that to me was, and I, I realized her ch child probably came out about 20 minutes ago at the end of it. As a cast member in the park, we want this costume to fit with the story. So if you're working in our emporium, you know, it's the turn of the century costume that you would have found in an emporium. But if you're on stage and you're Cinderella, we want that gown to glow. It's clear when you go backstage and have an opportunity to interact with the cast members um, when they're not on stage, is their commitment, uh, their own enthusiasm for being a cast member. Being a ride operator on the Jungle Cruise, I'm going to brag here, because being a ride operator on the Jungle Cruise is the best job in the whole park. OK, you want to hear my favorite Jungle Cruise joke. This is it, OK. As you go through the hippo pool, and you go bang, bang, you shoot the hippos and all that stuff, you turn around, and you approach the, the native village, right? The first thing you see is a canoe full of, of, of skulls sitting there. So, and I'm always turned, so I'm talking to the, I'm talking to the, the boat, the people in the boat, talking, 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 talking about the hypos. I turn around, I see those skulls, and I scream, and I dive down and find a little kid and hide behind him. I said, don't make any sudden moves. You know, uh, this is the natives, they're, 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 they could be very dangerous, but they're, sometimes they're friendly. And then I'm sitting there and I look, and as you come around the bend, they're dancing. They're doing that kind of jing, 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 dancing. I go, oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is extremely rare to see this. They're doing their famous, I can't find the bathroom dance. Everybody laughs, and you let them laugh a little bit, and you go on. Long pause, and you go, that's why they call them headhunters. You're not going there just to be on a ride in an attraction park. Well, when Walt imagined Disneyland in 1955, it really was a place where magic would be created inside what he called the berm, where everything was controlled and everything was a fantasy. You know, there's just something in the air. It's all a blend. The people, the cast members, the 
attention to detail, the cleanliness. You're going there to experience an environment. It was just, you, you just the smell of the popcorn, the, the see the horses, you know, and the horse-drawn street carriages go by, and that great pop, 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 the little, the little cars, and that steam whistle of the train there. You know, costumes and uh, the smell of foods and uh, the sounds that you hear. And detail is what makes Disney so unique and original. You can have a main street, you can have walls, but if you're gonna make them Victorian, if you're gonna make them feel like a great time of the past, every day, every night, you think about the details. You know, down to every lamppost, to the bolts holding it down. Walt taught us details to think things out to the very end, and those are just simple little formulas. In between pictures, I'd work on Disneyland until one day Walt said, well, I think you're gonna stay on Disneyland. And um, he says, you're gonna like it, and I did. It's very much like a motion picture. I think it's very parallel to motion pictures. The fact that you have a long shot, you see something in, in a longer view, you come in from the medium shot, and you walk up and touch something, you're into a close-up. If you don't buy into the magic, you're not gonna buy the story. Yeah, you bring that to Disneyland here, and John Hench was often fond of saying, we go to such lengths to eliminate all of the contradictions to make it so that when you walk down Main Street or you enter Fantasyland, you believe in it wholeheartedly, and then when we take you into an adventure where there's real magic, people will buy into that too and suspend their disbelief and enjoy an attraction as though they're part of it. So when you come into town square and hear the band play their concert here, it's so important that you don't jolt our guests and have them playing something that's not appropriate to the streetcar with the horse and the, the old cars and the wonderful architecture of the turn of the century. Uh, you know, we have the Disneyland marching band that has marched here from day one. They were supposed to be on a two-week contract, and they're still here 50 years later. The entertainment division was really the, the, the division that was responsible for putting the show all together and bringing it to, to life. It really became what we call the glitter and goo division. We were responsible for putting the sparkle on the show, uh, whether it was the Dapper Dans on Main Street or a special parade or a show on one of the stages. Wally Bogue and the whole wonderful cast of the Golden Horseshoe Review, which was always one of Dad's very favorite things. I once did a, a, a scene in a, in a musical comedy where I was a, uh, beaten up by, by some character and I spit out a couple of, of beans for teeth. Those were big lima beans I used to hold four in my mouth and got a big laugh. We then went on to produce special events. Oh, Winnie the Pooh for president. Um, I was hired in the early days of Disneyland uh, because um, my forte is promotions. So in 1972 and 1971 earlier, we decided that we were gonna run Winnie the Pooh for president. And they came here for the Pooh political convention that we had here live at Disneyland, and it was just wonderful. Parades became a, a, a place where all the characters and people could see a single show um, that brought the magic of Disneyland uh, to them. Thank heaven for that, because here comes the parade. You know, every one of our guests 
someday wants to be one of the Disney characters. Whether it's a character you remember as a child or characters that your children are growing up with. And I would say um, it really became popular probably about 10 years ago. Every little girl wants to be a princess. The most uh, popular parade ever.